Hey guys, welcome to Into Fly Fishing. My name is Pierre Hubert and today I'll show you how to tie a simper. Uh, for the material that we're going to use, uh, I'm tying this fly on a Galagatsu SL12S in a size 60. The thread is Vivas 240 denier in chartreuse. The tail will be made out of a couple of materials. First off for the base, um, I'm going to use white buck tail. Then some white schlappen. This is very long um, chicken feathers, about six to seven inches long. To add accent color, I'm going to use chartreuse um, strung saddle ankle. For flesh, I'm going to use a chartreuse flash of I'm also going to add two um, grizzly saddle feathers, one on each side of the tail. Then to finish the tail off, I'm going to use a couple of strands of white ostrich plumes. The body itself is going to be made out of two colors of marabou. Firstly, white, it's going to be the base. And then in front of the white, we'll palmer in chartreuse marabou. To finish the fly off, we'll just seal the head with some Solaris UV head cement. For the tools that we're going to use, obviously a bobbin holder. Tying scissors, a whip finishing tool, a very helpful tool is a little comb, you can also use a toothbrush, old toothbrush, just that's just used to comb out all the fibers of the marabou, and then to cure the UV resin, just a UV torch. So that's all the tools and the materials we need to tie the fly. So without further ado, let's get cracking. Okay guys, so the first step is to place the hook into the vise. Um, just a note on the hook, this is a Gamagatsu SL12S. It's a hook designed for big game, big saltwater species. Um, it's one of these standards for giant trevally fishing because it has a very wide gap and it doesn't e open up that easily. Um, so when choosing a hook for your intended prey, just keep um, the hook strength in mind and also the gape. The gape is quite important. Uh, wide gape allows you to get good hookups on very large fish. Um, so after you've secured the hook into the vise properly, um, just time to attach the tying thread, just secure that, a couple of wraps, cut off the excess, then with touching turns, lay a thread foundation forward, like that, and then we're going to lay a thread foundation to the back. Um, the straight section of the Gamagatsu SL12 is about, ends about there, we're not going to lay thread foundation all the way to the back, we're going to stop about two thirds of the way, between two thirds and three quarters to there. Like that, that should do. So the thread once again just gives a base for your tying materials to bite into. So the first step then is to Cut a little section of bucktail. Uh, it doesn't need to be that long. Um, it just provides structure to the rest of the tail. Um, so just make sure that try and get the longest fibers that you have. Like that. After you've cut the section, just pull on the tips and then just remove any short fibers like that. I'm just going to cut straight again. Like that. 
hold it in place and make a couple of wraps. After you've made a couple of wraps, just pick the tail up, wrap behind it twice, wrap over it again. Now you can really pull on it to secure it and run your thread forward over that material. Uh, be careful of, of cutting the bucktail section too short over here. Um, you don't want to create a very large bump that will cause your thread to slip later on. So that's, that's perfect, the amount of fibers. So after that, it's time to tie in the white schlappy. So these, it's hard to find quality schlap and sometimes they're either too short or they're long enough but they, they just look terrible. Um, in any case, if you find long enough fibers that's fine. Um, when the flies are wet you can't really see the quality, you know, the, if they're a little bit broken or something. But out of a tire's point of view, you would like to get the best stuff. So. But it does vary, it's like a hit and miss. Some brands you get good quality feathers and then the next time you buy it, you struggle a little bit. So these are quite nice. It's a very long feather and it tapers down nicely. And it's, a, it's quite soft, like that, but it does have quite a quite thick stem right here where you're going to tie it into. So select two feathers that are, that are relatively same. Good. So what we're going to do is we're going to tie the feathers splaying outwards. So in other words, the feather has a natural tendency to curve to the one side. So that curve will be tied into splay outwards. So this feather has a tendency to splay upward like that. So we're going to tie it on the side nearest to the camera so that it splays outward. So the length, uh, I want about the same, let me just get my tying scissors here. So the length of the hook, total length of the hook, two, two times, of one time longer, one and a half times longer, that should be fine. Round about to this point. I use this as a marker for these size so samples. Right there. So pinch it in place. Make a loose wrap. One more wrap. That's it. Just like that. Take your other feather. Stroke while holding it in place. Stroke the both feathers together and just make sure that they're the same length there. That's it. Once you're happy with the length, pinch it in place, one loose wrap, tighter and then very tight wrap. That's fine. Just adjust it a little bit more. Okay, one or two locking wraps. Just like that. Now it looks like a bunny mess. Just going to cut them off quite long like that because as I said earlier I don't want to create a massive step I want to create a taper here otherwise the thread tends to slip off right so that's the first two now I'm going to add some chartreuse strung saddle Once again, it's a very long feather and it has a natural curve to it and that you want to splay outwards again. So the, the reason why we tie the feathers to splay outward is that when the fly is wet and you strip it through the water and you stop, the feathers will open up a little bit in the, their natural direction and as soon as you strip it again it will fold back and so it just creates this sort of movement in the water um, it just mimics a natural you know natural bait 
So place the one feather on the opposite side, measure against the length of the white schlappen already tied in, pinch it in place, and secure it. It's fine if the feathers stand a little bit upward and a little bit scraggly, that's 100% fine. That'll just create a little bit more movement and as soon as the fly is wet, you won't notice it that much. Same on the opposite side. Just like that. Cut off the excess. Just cover it. Now it's time for a little bit of flash. As I always mention, you don't have to use that much flash. In fact, it's quite optional. It's not, it's not something that you have to put into the fly. Um, so in this case, I'm going to put three strands, up three strands on each side of the fly. So I took three strands off the off the flashaboo. Flip the fly on its side, tie it in. I'm not gonna cut it yet. Three more strands. fly on its side, place it right on the side and tie it in. Now pull the flash with the tail and after you released all of the tail feathers you can cut it off right there. Now they're just 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 longer than the tail but and they're all the same length. Now it's time to tie in the grizzly saddle ankle. This is optional. Um, I know that these feathers might be hard to get hold of. Um, it's just a nice accent to add to the fly. These are tied. Um, you'll see they're very long saddle, saddle fibers, feathers, very, very long, and that will just add like a lateral line to the fly that we want tied in right in the middle of the tail, the same length as the rest of the feathers, right there. Once you're happy with the length, pinch it in place. couple of wraps like that. Same with a feather on the other side. Measure it. It's slightly too long. Pull it back. That's it. And then a couple of wraps lock in place. There you are. Cut off excess, lock them in place just to make sure that they don't move around, that looks very scraggly now but it's, it's the way we want it. Right, for the last step, I like adding, uh, so just move it a little bit, that's it. Um, I like adding a couple of ostrich plume fibers to the tail. I just cut off four there. You'll see that they're very long as well. What we're going to do with them, we're just going to position them around the tail. You 
in four different positions. So that one we tighten there, turn the vise, that one we tighten about 45, 90 degrees further, that one another 90 degrees can just measure them about the same length as the tail. The ostrich fibers add a lot of movement to the fly as they also um, they sort of stay separate. They don't you know they don't fold into the tail as much, so they stay separate and. Um, it's also a great material to use when you're tying um, squid, squid flies. That's it, so all four are in. Now we just cut off the excess. And now we're going to cover up all this material. Right, that, that's the tail done. Looks very buggy and bushy. So, at that point, we're going to tie in some white marabou. That will create a color break between the tail and the head of the fly. So, just going to select a feather that has long fibers. So just remove the straight back all the fibers like that and then break off the fibers here at the back. It's off colored or sticking together or whatever. And then pull back the fibers tip until you have that and tie it in at the tip like that now just take your thread a little bit forward this is not a very long marabou feather. If you don't have long marabou feathers like I do, or because I also don't have long fat feathers, then you can just palm a one, tie the next one, palm another one, tie the next one until the body is done. Um, so while palmering it, just make sure that you don't trap any fibers. So continuously stroke out. any fibers pull them back pull them back like that then just secure the tip I'm holding it. Before cutting it off, just take that comb, the comb out any fibers, cut off the tip, like that, fold any fibers back, like that. That was a little bit too short, so we're going to add another one. Just getting a nice marabou feather here. Fit. front and just palm it forward 
striking all the fibers back before you wrap. Strike it back, wrap. Keep the tip in place. Wrap. Secure them. Fit. Once again, before cutting it off, just comb out all the fibers. Pull back, secure it, like that. Now I'll just comb back the fibers. You'll see that even though it looked a little bit messy, it creates a nice body at this stage. Turn it around a little bit, let's comb out these fibers. That. Okay, so now we have enough white marabou. Now it's time to tie in chartreuse. This is about what you want, ideally. Um, feather that's long and it has very long fibers. Also, the stem is flexible, but not too flexible. You can work hard with it. That's the perfect feather. Pull out any fibers at the base. Pull back the fibers from the tip to get them perpendicular. And then secure the tip. Cut off the excess, run the thread forward, just build a little base for it so that the feather doesn't slip, like that. Now palm it, the feather forward. It helps to Wet the fibers slightly, finally pulling it back. Keep palmering them back, pull them out. Just like that. Secure with thread. that and then comb back the fibers while you rotate the vise like that now we have a gap for one more feather select a slightly shorter one this time that's it remove any fibers from the base right there, pull back fibers from the tip and lock it in place, cut off the excess, palm it forward again. This would be the last feather. While we'll keep it in place, just lock it. Couple of wraps, like that. Now cut off the stem, being careful not to cut off the thread that's hanging free. Comb back all the fibers, making sure to comb out any trapped fibers. Here and there you'll still find a trapped fiber. Just comb that out. Brush back all the fibers on the fly. Wet 
these front aero fibers slightly and then just build a head on the fly like that now take your whip finishing tool and do a whip finish after the first whip finish pull tight you can really tuck Pull tight on this 240 denier. Another whip finish. Pull tight. Cut off the thread. Like that. Now we're going to apply some UV resin. Turn the fly in your vise while applying it just to ensure that you create a nice even coating on all the exposed thread then just cure the resin with your UV torch uh, if you don't have UV resin that's fine you can also use um, nail varnish um, I think up until when up until the point where UV resin became quite readily available uh, nail varnish was used mostly. You can also use super glue if you don't have nail varnish. Just something to give the fly durability. And that's it. There you have it guys. That's a chartreuse and white semper. Perfect big game um, fly. Very effective on Giant Ravelli, um, Jack Ravel. I've even caught tarpon on it, so yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed this step-by-step -step guide and that um, we'll see each other again in the next video. Cheers from Into Fly Fishing. Keep well.